The world has nothing for you at all. There is nothing the world has for you other than an opportunity for you to give, for you to share, for you to serve, for you to radiate, for you to activate your potential. That's all the world has for you. Good afternoon. Just look around and look at you guys. I know you guys have been doing processes, but just look at each other and see what's happening after you've talked to each other. See the glow about each other. See the luminosity that's emanating from the very depth of your being. And just, just say to an, an individual, say just as you were doing earlier, just say, I, I recognize the brilliance in you. Say it out loud. <laughs> and you have come to set it free. To make a mighty difference on this planet and to help change the world for the better. Now scream about that. <laughs> scream about it. It is my joy, my honor to be here with my Mind Valley family at, at AFES and to remind all of us that, of course, what we're creating here and what Vision has pulled together is a, a living field that is as rich and as real as gravity, as rich as a real as electromagnetism. What you're creating here is, is, a, is a field of love and beauty and intentionality and peace that's impacting us right here and right now. And you're becoming aware that you are spiritual astronauts that are putting on this kind of an atmosphere and taking it with you wherever you go. That you are somewhere within you, you already know that you are a unique emanation of, of infinite potential, of infinite divine possibilities. And you have come to set this free in ways that are right now beyond your wildest imaginings. That this field that we are co-creating right here and right now is pulling us away from the undercurrent of the lower frequencies of life that deal with lack, limitation, scarcity, not enoughness, fear, doubt, worry, bigotry, racism, homophobia. You're being pulled out of those thought forms that are beseeching the human experience and, and stepping into an awareness that this field that you're co-creating is where you can live forever. As a unique, yes, as a distinct, unique emanation of infinite potential, carrying all of what the presence is, carrying, you are a composite spiritual idea that can carry everything that the infinite is, but you are a unique expression of that. There's no one else exactly like you, and if you don't do you, you won't be done. If you don't do you, you won't be done. So as this distinct, individualized expression of the most high a presence, you took an incarnation, the eternal, the cosmic, cosmos, as distinct as you jumped into time as a human incarnation, and as you incarnate, you were imprinted. You were imprinted by the social milieu that was going on at the time, the thoughts and the beliefs of your parents. You were, you were imprinted by the society. You were imprinted by history, imprinted by the past that it coagulated into human experience, and you have learned to survive that imprint. You've learned to adapt from that by that imprint. And ultimately, because you are here, you're learning to transcend and be tr and transform beyond the imprint. And actually, the, the four ways of, of being in the world is survival, adaption, transformation, and dissolution. So this imprint that hit you, you've learned to survive it. Some people, then they learn to adapt to it. And then they transcend it through transformational technologies of which you are learning here today. And then there's a dissolution process that is everything that no longer belongs to you that can't hang out in the vibration that you've now become begins to dissolve, begins to disintegrate. You begin to lose it. And so that's sometimes called the crisis. Sometimes it's called an existential crisis. Sometimes it's called the midlife crisis. Sometimes it's called teenage angst. But, but in the moment in which you go through the period of dissolution, letting go past identities, previously held masks and beliefs and points of view, the process starts all over again. You come to another level of awareness. However, you're at the level of transformation. You are here. 
to be transformed by the renewing of your mind and soul on a regular basis so that you're constantly living, not in adaption, but you're constantly living in transformation, transcendence, dissolution. Transformation, transcendence, dissolution. Over and over and over again to reflect and to reveal the infinite nature of your being and the soul. So you did not arrive here to walk lockstep in status quo. You did, not take, you did not peer over into time and say, I think I'm going to go to planet Earth, and I'm just going to do what everybody else is doing. No, you did not. You arrived on planet Earth to shatter the status quo, to break free from prevailing paradigms, to not just study history, but to make history. You have come. To break free in such a way that who you are as an infinite divine uh, emanation of pure intelligence, unconditional love, perfect peace, life itself can begin to reveal itself in ways that it never has before because you have never existed before you. As this uh, divine emanation, because you are here, are saying yes uh, to the activation of your potential and, and, and to set it free. Now, we all have the same purpose. In my language, you all have the same purpose. And that purpose is to reflect and to reveal the cosmos in a way that has never happened before. You can say the divine presence. You can say great God of the universe. You can say divine life. Whatever it is. We have the purpose to reveal this presence, this uh, cosmic happening, to localize the cosmic happening in a way that has never, ever happened before. We all have different missions of how we do that, uh, uh, but uh, our purpose is to reveal that, and that is how you break free from the status quo, walking lockstep. In other words, you have arrived here today uh, to take your small box vaccine small box people living in small boxes you're here to take a small box vaccine so that you're setting yourself free you can scream about it it's okay i like noise i like i like not noise i like a cacophony of screaming in, anyway you come to take a small box vaccine now as you are walking in the direction of your sacred yes as you're walking in the direction of, of, of yielding to your potential, having outrageous dreams to have contagious means, uh, dreams that are beyond the present paradigm, dreams that are beyond what you think you can accomplish on your own, dreams that are beyond what you've ever thought before, you end up having a, conta having a contagious meme. A meme is not just what you put on your Facebook or on your Instagram. A meme is something, an idea that's delivered to each other by no means of genetic connection. We, we become very contagious. And then the process of, of doing that, we bump into being influential. Now, there's different kinds of ways in which individuals influence. One is covert. People try to influence you covertly. You have a tendency to resist that. People want you to, to, to believe what they believe. They want you to think what you, the way they think. They want you to buy what they want you to buy. That's covert influencing. I mean, that's overt influencing. Then there, I, I, I just might as well say because my talk is the source of influence, in case you didn't know that. Then, and then... There is covert influence. And this is, for instance, a, a mother may say to a child, oh, I, I, I like the way Johnny's acting, you know, and it's covertly trying to get the child to act like Johnny. So there's covert influencing. And then there's subliminal influencing. Subliminal influences, you've all seen subliminal influence. You've seen advertisements. You've seen beautiful women standing next to cars smoking cigarettes, and you either want the car or the cigarette in order to get the women. It's, it's subliminal <laughs> So, so there's covert and uh, uh, co uh, overt, covert, and subliminal, but then there is being influential. Being influential means that you have surrendered your life. You, you are in service to something that's bigger than your little self. And you're being insert, and you're being in, you are being influenced by that which is bigger than your in, in your, your little self, and then you begin to radiate that particular quality. You're not covertly doing it, you're not overtly doing it, you're not subliminally doing it. You have become a tuning fork, radiating with that frequency and that vibration, and you develop a kind of electromagnetism in which the very thing that you're in service to 
radiates through you so profoundly that it activates that energy in others without you saying a word, without you trying to convince somebody, without you trying to make somebody do something. You're, the vibration that you are carrying influences, so you have become influential rather than trying to influence. The source of being influential is service to something higher than yourself, something larger than your little self. So it begins to carry you. Now, all of us, let somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> now, 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 you have to understand, of course, that you cannot influence the infinite, whatever name you choose to call it. You can't influence God. If you could, we'd all be in trouble. You see, because, because the presence, by every name you want to call it, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever, never compromises itself, never contradicts its nat nature, never works against itself. It's always the same. It's always carrying the vibration of love and beauty and intelligence and order, uh, luminosity, brilliance. You can't influence it, but it can influence you as you are in service to one of its attributes, and then you glow. You you become so luminous uh, with, this, uh, with this presence, you cannot help but influence individuals by the radiant vibration that's emanating from you. And then, and, the, and, and there's, a, there's a wonderful, magnificent truth about that. You're no longer a neutral individual. These attributes of love and beauty, intelligence, abundance, uh, harmonizing prosperity, all of these qualities are non-neutral. They are constantly active, which means as you begin to uh, surrender yourself to something higher, become in service to something higher, and you become influenced uh, by that, you will drive people away or you will draw people to you, but there's no neutrality there. You, you, you will draw individuals who are uh, uh, open and receptive and want to be about that dynamic energy, and you will drive people away uh, that don't want to play at that particular level. You won't have to do anything but be yourself. You'll, you'll, you'll drive or you'll draw. Now, how do, how do we move about in this, in this realm? There's effluence, affluence, and influence. Effluence is generosity. It's giving. There can be no permanent affluence unless there's effluence in your consciousness. So first, you're in service to something higher. And you begin to ask yourself, because you've been given everything, you're a composite spiritual idea that carries the infinite in ways beyond your wildest imagining, you have to live in the inquiry of what can I give, what can I share, how can I shine, how can I radiate. You, can, you have to give up the thought of what can I get from the world. The world has nothing for you at all. There is nothing the world has for you other than an opportunity for you to give, for you to share, for you to serve, for you to radiate, for you to activate your potential. That's all the world has for you. And, and just to be clear, there's a difference between the world and the planet. The world and the planet are not the same thing. The planet is Mother Earth, Gaia, rainforests, rivers, three-fourths water, trees. It's, it's a magnificent, luminous being that's becoming more and more conscious of itself. And then there is the world. The world is held together by opinions, points of view, positionalities, beliefs, which is why individuals can be on the same spot on the planet but be in different worlds. The world and the planet is not the same thing. The world has nothing for you, you see? You are here to ask, how can I shine? How can I give? How can I share? How can I radiate? And as then as you become influenced by what you're surrendering to, you change the narrative in the world. You shift the narrative. Instead of lack, limitation, fear, doubt, worry, separation, not enoughness, your narrative becomes, I have everything that I need within me. I am surrendered to something larger than my little self. I am in service to it. That flows through me. I become a tuning fork. And then because of my radiance, everything that I need uh, shows up in ways by which I do not have to manipulate 
to get them, I'm already that vibration. I'm already that frequency. So I don't have to manipulate someone. All I have to do is be me, articulate to my vision over and over and over again to myself, be able to fluently say what I have surrendered my life to, the, the higher purpose of my existence, and then my world begins to change. I live in a different world. I live in a world of abundance and joy. So first, there must be effluence. How can I give? I must uh, uh, put a groove in my mind so that the inquiry is always there. How can I give today? How can I shine today? How can I radiate today? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you getting this? Somebody scream about it. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. After effluence, then there is affluence. Affluence is all of your needs met. When there is effluence with an E, then there's affluence with an A, which means you're tapping into the abundance that is everywhere, that never depletes itself, never runs out. As the Bhagavad Gita reminds us, you take abundance from abundance, and abundance still remains. You cannot deplete any of it, but you're living in that octave, that frequency, that vibration, because you are living in effluence first. Affluence shows up in now you're the vibration of influence. Again, you're not making it happen. You're making it welcome. You're not making it happen. You're not forcing it. So then you get to do what? You get to fuel and fund the global brain. In other words, the global brain exists. You're going to learn technologies on, on particular applications on how to market, how to, how to plan, how to use your technology in order to touch more and more people. The global brain already exists. We can, we're live streaming right now. We're touching people all over the world. You can be on your computer and talk to somebody in Japan right now. The global brain already exists. What we're creating is the, gl is the global heart. In other words, you are funding the global brain with the global heart because you are not just trying to uh, uh, covertly and overtly influence. You are being influenced by something larger than yourself. So you're becoming influential. And now the global heart begins to emerge. Right use of technology, not manipulation. Right use of all of the tools you are going to learn because you are the right individual to use the technology. As the Zen statement would say, if the right person does the wrong thing, it'll turn out right. But if the wrong person does the right thing, it'll turn out wrong. Speaking of consciousness, if your intention is high, if in fact you're surrendering to a higher order of life, you're, you're in service to something higher, you have become what the Zen would call the right individual, the right person. So even if you stumble and you make mistakes and you don't quite know what you're doing and you're on a high learning curve, it's going to turn out right. Why? Because you're in tune with the fundamental harmony of the universe. But if you are the wrong person, what can I get? Stingy, greed, avarice, hate. You can do all the right stuff, but it's going to turn out wrong because you're not in tune with the fundamental harmony of the universe. Are you catching what I'm saying here? Are you, are you catching this? Are you catching this? So, yes, you want to be influential. And you want to understand the overt, covert, and subliminal aspects of influencing, but where you want to be in order for all of the technologies to work is be able to go inside of your own soul and remember why you came to earth. You did not come to walk, step, walk lockstep in the status quo. You did not walk to come to just adapt to how you've been imprinted. You have come to transform your life. Wake up again and remember your soul call. And then be of service with effluence, generosity, giving as your inquiry every single day. And you will discover by law, the universe by law, 
will bring you your assignments every single day. When I wake up in the morning, I, I do a great degree of oftentimes gratitude, sometimes still laying in the bed. I'm just very grateful for my life, grateful for everything that's occurring in my life. I'm grateful for the lessons I'm learning. I'm, I'm grateful, grateful, and grateful. And then I surrender. I surrender. I turn my life over to the presence that is never in absence. And then I say, what is my assignment today? What is my assignment? Now, I know I have a lot of things I have to do running a spiritual community and doing different things, but I always say, where is my assignment so that I'm aware of something that comes across my field that I am to be about that will not only grow me but make an impact on the individual or on the circumstance or on the situation that comes in front of me. Gratitude, surrender, what is my assignment? Gratitude, surrender, what is my assignment? Say with me, if you will, I'm a tuning fork for the divine. Say it with a little bit more gusto. I'm a tuning fork for the divine. I am a tuning fork for divine intelligence. I'm a tuning fork for unconditional love. Divine peace. Infinite joy. It flows through me. Ah, somebody scream about it. So the true source of influence is your service to something higher. Without that, you're living a life of manipulation, trying to get something to be successful. However, when you begin to surrender your life to something higher, an attribute of the presence, even your definition of success changes. It, 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 I remember uh, speaking about um, success. Uh, 1.0 is I get rich. Success 2.0 is I get rich and become a philanthropist. Success 3.0 is as I'm becoming successful, my give back is already built into my business plan. In other words, my business carries with it the, the bottom lines of the planet, people, purpose, and prosperity. The four Ps. So already built into the business plan is where I'm giving back, where I'm making a difference on the planet. Where I'm, where I'm making difference for people and prosperity is there. When you become influenced by something higher, the, pro, the bottom line isn't just profit. Your definition of success changes and you're here for a whole larger order of being and it fuels you. It funds you because you are in tune again with the fundamental order of the universal presence. You're not by yourself. You are opening up to something higher. Feel into that with me for a moment. Just feel into what you are in service to or what you are willing to be in service to. <clears throat> I was looking at something that Vision put out, and he was in service taking a stand for unity. That beyond everything that he's doing and all the wonderful things he's doing, he's taking a stand for unity on this planet, this time in human history. Thus the rich diversity. And that's people, people coming from all over the world to come together to mine deep thoughts and intentionalities and, 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 and expanded awarenesses of that which is real. What are you in service to? Beyond the surface definition, the old definition of success, what are you in service to? And notice if it's an attribute of the presence, that would be love, that would be order, that would be harmony, that would be peace, that would be unity, that would be oneness, that would be beauty. And give yourself permission to actually whole solely give yourself over in service to this dynamic. You're not, you're not uh, 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 going to give up. Your visions of prosperity. You're not going to give up your visions of the dynamic health of the body temple. No, 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 no. All of those come in, come in, become stronger as you give yourself over to a higher frequency of life. 
something wonderful begins to happen. So don't think as you enter into a higher order of being that you're going to sit around and contemplate your navel and do nothing. No. More will be demanded of you. I'm thinking of the story of the Zen laundry man. This, 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 this is a laundry man. He did, the, he did the laundry in this particular village. But he practiced meditation every single day. And his clothes were cleaner than anybody else's. They sparkled. They glowed. And, and, and he's practicing. He's meditating. He's practicing. He's meditating. And then one day he has a satori moment. So he goes to his master teacher and says, Master teacher, I believe I'm enlightened. Teacher says, hold, hold on a minute. Hold, hold on. Let me check this out. So the master teacher says, what is, what is Zen? At that moment, he dropped his laundry bag. He stood up very straight. His posture was perfect. There was a, a countenance. He was glowing, shining, radiating. His eyes were staring into eternity. And the master teacher said, yeah, this is good. What is enlightenment? At that moment, he picked up his laundry bag and went back to work. He infused. He wasn't sitting around doing nothing. He infused this infinite intelligence into what he was called to do moment by moment. And in that moment, he was doing the laundry for the, for the, for the village. When you begin to surrender or be in service to something higher, and it takes over your life, your activities will be infused with a love, a peace, a beauty, a joy. You will begin to love that which you don't even like to do. Something will change within you. Your definition of success will change. Your definition of trying to influence people will change. You will be influential by what you're tapped into. You will cut a groove. So strong in your mind, your subjective tendency, that as the statement goes, when, when uh, two or three agree, there I am, when the conscious mind and the subconscious mind agree, the superconscious mind takes over. When you begin to consciously engage in being of service to something higher, and then you cut this groove, in your subconscious by, by telling yourself every single day, what, is, what do I have to give? What do I have to share? What do I have to shine? I have everything. What do I have to give? What do I have to shine? I have everything. What do I have to give? What do I have to shine? I have, what do I, have to, I have everything. The conscious mind, the subconscious mind agree, and then the superconscious mind takes over. Your entire being becomes full. Are you catching this? Are you getting this? Are you getting this? I want you to stand up for a moment for those who can. If you can't, you can, you can, you can do it when you're sitting down. Put your arms up like this as a sign of, of, of availability and receptivity. Remember, the greatest quotient in the world is, is, is availability quotient. If you're available, then something larger than your little self begins to take over, and you find miracles taking place in your life. You find a, a spontaneous goodness happening. You find uh, things occurring that you didn't even plan because you're in sync with the fundamental harmony of the universe. Say with me, if you will, I'm available to more good than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more good than I've ever imagined. I am in service to something higher than my little self. It's taking over my life right now. I glow with it. I radiate it. I shine with it. I am available to more good than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more power than has ever moved through me. It's infinite. I'm available to more love. I'm available to more peace. More joy. Harmony. I am a tuning fork for excellence. 
to say that two more times. I'm a tuning fork for excellence. Now let's say it all together and let's shake this place up. I am a tuning fork for excellence. And it's happening right now. Somebody scream about it. Now, that feeling right there, that feeling right there, I want you to take a deep breath. Release. Deep breath. Release. Inhale. Suspend it at the apex. Suspend the breath right there. But feel that you are available to more good than you've ever imagined and that you have so much to give and that you have a, a desire to be a tuning for it. Hold it as long as you can without hurting yourself. For right now, your nervous system is acclimating around that thought. Release. Ah. Normally, you hold your breath around fear or, or when you're startled. And it's a thought that goes into the nervous system. Like, oh, what happened? And that fear goes into the nervous system. And then you do a lot of spiritual work on yourself. And, and, and it's like carrying, it's like, it's like driving with your brakes on. Because your nervous system is holding the thoughts of the fear when you held your breath. So what we're doing now is we're freeing ourselves from that. So we're no longer driving with our brakes on. We're going to free up the nervous system. So uh, inhale. Release. Inhale, release, inhale, suspend right there. Take a little bit more air in. Now feel what you felt when you said, I'm available to more good than I've ever imagined. Feel that you are a tuning fork for excellence. Feel that all of your needs are being met right now. And let the nervous system acclimate itself around that And then when you can't hold it anymore, you just release with the sound of ah. Ah. We're going to do it one more time. Hands up. Say with, say with me, if you will, I'm a tuning fork for excellence. I'm a tuning fork for excellence. Everything is working together for my good. I am in service to something higher than my little self. I am in service to excellence. I'm in service to love. I'm in service to peace. I'm in service to beauty, abundance, joy, real success. I am vibrationally influential. Now inhale, suspend. A little bit more air in. Suspend it right there. Your body temple, your nervous system is acclimating itself around you being divinely influential. Having all of your needs met. Everything is working together for your good. The body temple is coming into an alignment with that right now. No longer driving with your brakes on. No longer thought forms of fear in the body temple. You're releasing all of that. Release. Ah. So you're stepping into real courage. The opposite of courage is conformity. And because you did not arrive here to conform to the world as it is, but to be agents of influence, being influential by connecting with, articulating about, and surrendering to your purpose, and surrendering to the frequency of something larger than your little self, your very presence will be an influence. Now we want to just move our body. Just move your body. Play that music so they can just begin to move that body. <laughs> Put a smile on your face. We're cutting a groove, Vishy. We're cutting a groove. <laughs> Nobody's looking at you. Come on. We're sharing the spice of life. <laughs> it's 
Somebody scream. Now when you scream, you're entering into the modality of celebration. You are here to localize a cosmic celebration. The entire cosmos is celebrating because it gets to participate in the realm of excellence, in the realm of the divine. You're here to localize that celebration. Somebody scream. Let me see your moves. All right, you got moves. You got moves. You got moves. Let those endorphins flow. Let that serotonin move through the temple. Tonic chemicals, not toxic chemicals. Tonic chemicals flowing. Somebody scream about it. Say, I'm available. I'm open. I'm receptive to more good than I can imagine. Scream about that. We're cutting the groove. Oh, you got moves. You got moves. <laughs> you got moves. Let me see. Scream about it. Okay, we can bring down the music. Heart open, hands up, hands up, heart open. Now here's the other deal. When you begin to surrender or become, if you don't like the words, I love the word surrender, but to be in service every single day to something higher than your little self and your own survival. Not only do you become influential, but you become impervious to lower frequencies. Everything is vibration. So the world is full. Feel the thoughts of lack, hate, separation, not enoughness. You become impervious to those thought forms. So you're able to walk in the world. Remember, the world is not the planet. You're able to walk in the world with all of the various sense of separation and not enoughness and all the stuff that's going on, but you won't be of it. You'll be of a different frequency, you see. You'll know when you're off, that ba off base of that frequency, and you'll come back on. You are a celebrant. You are localizing a divine celebration. So the power of being influential is the power that you're tapping into. And ultimately, you see that you are an emanation of that power. You're not separate. It's not, oh, please come here. It's already here. I need to be aware of it. I need to activate it. I need to cultivate it. I need to radiate it. So this becomes my vibrational identity. This is where I live. So that as we were talking earlier today, even when things happen you don't like, and Vision was talking about my companion, you, you have the companion sometimes called sadness or fear or whatever, but it's not you. It's something passing through this larger field of availability, this larger field of openness. You see it, you acknowledge it, you look at it, and the observer effect says, whatever it is you observe changes on a subatomic level based on your observation. So when you're in this field of radiant receptivity, radiant effluence, generosity, you watch your companions and they start to have less and less power over you. They start to dissolve based on your observation. And, and the, the better and the more coherent your intentionality becomes, then your, your focus becomes laser-like. And you can see, oh, there's sadness there. It's passing through. It's diminishing. Oh, there's fear passing through. It's diminishing. You are greater than you think you are. You're more magnificent than you ever thought you can be.
And you are here to be influential, funding and fueling the global brain, all the technological ways by which you can make an impact on the planet. We don't throw any of that away. We use that, those practical tools, but we infuse it with the global heart. Why am I really here? What is my purpose? Why do I exist? I'm breaking free from status quo, taking my small box vaccine every single day, talking to myself properly, consciously, and changing my subconscious so that the conscious and the subconscious agree. Super consciousness takes over. And we live a magnificent. Just turn to someone and say, you are so magnificent. But do it this way. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you are magnificent. <laughs> yeah, you can give up the hug. One, mo one other being, do it to one other being. Mm, 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 mm. Woo-wee. You are something else. <laughs> now, when you finish that, you can take your seat. Don't take it. I mean, sit in it. Now, this message, this message will repeat. Because you, you, you want this to go in. You still celebrating down here? Take a breath. Ah. Breath. Ah. Breath. Ah. So this is what you heard me, me say. You heard me say that you are here co-creating a field of love and intelligence and beauty, potency, power, abundance. A field that can be measured. Just like you can measure electromagnetism, you can measure a gravitational force field, even though you can't see it with the sensorium. As you're here at AFES, you're creating a field. That field is impacting you in a very wonderful and magnificent way. <clears throat> Ultimately, as you increase your practice, you're able to carry the field where you go. As a spiritual astronaut, you carry your own at atmosphere. So you come here, <clears throat> be invigorated, renewed, inspired, go through periods of transformation, so you're able to carry uh, this field. You have heard me say in, in, in substance uh, that you are unique, that this vast presence, by whatever name you choose to call this presence, doesn't do do-overs and doesn't repeat itself. It got you right the first time, the very first time. And <clears throat> your uniqueness is how the infinite reveals its infinite nature. All of you get to show forth the attributes of the spirit, <clears throat> the attributes of life, in a way that only you can. Your particular nuance, your particular spin on the love, beauty, intelligence, and all of the infinite qualities. So your uniqueness is the way by which this life gets to come into its own as you. You don't have to pray out there to the infinite to come here. The presence is already here. It wants you to know yourself so that the presence can know itself as your life. You have everything along the way. When you're breaking free, from the previous paradigms that you were born into and the previous status quo. You have visions and dreams and possibilities that take you beyond your present way of thinking. The good is always outside of your present paradigm. And the more outrageous the dream, the more you have to surrender for help, availability, openness to more good coming in 
And then you end up having what is called a contagious meme. The meme is something that's passed on to people without any genetic coding. It's not that you inherit it physically. You start to become contagious, influential. Then you understand overt, covert, subliminal influencing, and many times it's trespassing. It's taking someone's mind and molding it in a particular way. It's a trespass, not you. Why? Because you are in service to something higher than your little self. And as you're in service to this something higher than your little self, It starts to influence you. You radiate that. And then when you use the technologies of influence, back of it is the global heart that's moving through the global brain. And your narrative, as it comes through you, of your service to something higher begins to change the world as we know it. The narrative in the world is lack, limitation, fear, doubt, worry, scarcity, not enough, there's hate, bigotry, racism, homophobia. Your narrative, your vibrational narrative changes the world. Status quoism gone. Something new emerges. You have come to the planet to bring something new that has never happened before, you see. Not to just repeat history. And then with that, service to something higher. Your influential nature is magnified. You become impervious. You live in a different world. And when you fall, you don't beat yourself up. You just get back up. You fall, you don't beat yourself up. You get up. You fall, you don't beat yourself up. You get up. Because your purpose to reflect and to reveal the entire cosmos in my particular way, in your particular way, is uppermost in your awareness. And in this frequency, life can heal anything, can mend anything in your life. And then have you strong enough to carry more and more and more of the cosmic energy. Yes, you want to be influential. You don't want to trespass. You want to be influential to that higher order of life. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? Yes? yes. Can you feel it? You, you can talk to me. I'm, I'm good with that. Can you, can you feel that? Can you feel, can you feel, can you feel it? <sighs> Breath. Release. Breath. Release. Breath. Sustain. Release. Pure influence is letting your light so shine before men and women. When they see you, they see the presence. They see what you're surrendered to. I think that might be it. I think so. Yeah. <laughs>